Hi students. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, text structures. So we have read at this point three different um, narratives, personal narratives, and um, and we're going to start writing our own. And so we should start thinking about text structures. And I feel like um, the two stories that we read sort of have two different sort of main kinds of text structures. Um, so one is this idea of montage. And montage we know from movies, right? It's like um, montage is that scene where we see that the character is getting in shape to fight the big fight. So we see a bunch of little images and then at the end they can fight the, their, their their buff or whatever. Um, so it's sort of the same idea, right? So it's a bunch of small stories and a bunch of small stories um, we usually call vignettes. Um, the word comes from French. Um, so it's like a little small slice of life sort of story that lead to a main idea, which is a theme, right? So we have like little story, little story, little story, little story, and then like idea, right? So from all those little stories, we understand uh, an essential idea. Um, so this is a really common type of movie. Um, we see them in movies all the time. Um, so we have that montage. Um, and then the other type of story that we see um, in these in these narratives that we've read are the hero's journey, which I think is like Rocky is sort of a classic um, hero's journey. Star Wars is also a really classic hero's journey. So um, it usually follows one character that's the protagonist. Oh, and I was going to add a footnote. I'll make it a head note actually. It's a little easier to see. So um, the protagonist is from Greek. Um, it means pro, which we know what that means, right? For and um, agon, which means struggle. Um, and so it's the character that we're rooting for. So it's the main character or um, the character we root for, right? Because we are for their struggle, right? We want them to succeed. Um, so that's what the, who the protagonist is, right? The main character, the character that we root for is a protagonist. Um, okay, so we have uh, this Rocky character, right? And um, it follows one character as they overcome some difficulty, enemy, big problem. And then at the end, they're always victorious, always. So I drew a little, a little example. So here we have our little, our little person and they're thinking, oh, we must climb this mountain. And then, you know, obviously it's a very big mountain. It goes far beyond you know, their little area. And we see them climb and they're like, oh, this is so hard. And then they climb even farther and they're like, oh, it's so hard, I'm crying, it's too hard, I'm gonna die. And then they get to the top and they're like, oh my God, I did it. And then this is just a joke. Um, okay, so, so we have these two sorts of stories, right? So we have these ones with like these little images that lead up to a big idea, or we have this one where we follow this one person as they sort of overcome a big difficulty or, or succeed in some sort of big, meaningful way. And so if I'm thinking about the stories that we've read, um, so first I think about Indian Takeout, right, by Jhumpa Lahiri. And I really think that this is a great example of a montage story because it's a bunch of little stories about her family's um, experiences with food growing up um, and relationship with food in India and the US. And then, um, and, it ends up telling this message about the importance of food and how food carries culture and also about um, sort of immigrants and how they change and are changed by the process of immigration, right? They change their new country and they're changed by their new country, which we see at the end of the story, right? That her parents have changed the country because now there's all of these spices are available everywhere in the United States, but also they are changed because they don't necessarily um, have the same rituals and routines that they had when things weren't available, right? Um, or they might not use all the old cooking tools anymore because they've realized that some things are a little bit easier. And so we have a bunch of like little stories, right? So we have like the first story of, um, of, of the food suitcase. And then we have this little story about the foods that they eat in India. And then we have the story about shopping. And then we have the story about all the cooking implements. And then we have the food, the story about the first meal when they come back. So it's like all of these little stories. I don't know if I'm going to mark. Oh, I found the mark, but here it is. So we have little story plus little story plus little story. I feel like it's kind of circular because she kind of starts and ends at the same place um, back in Rhode Island, right, at her parents' house, plus um, little story, plus 
little story and then it equals at the end this sort of central idea about food, about the immigrant experience, about what it means to be the children of immigrants, right? So that's sort of where it ends, right? So that's one kind of story and it's a great kind of story. Um, and then the other kind is sort of what we see with, um, with surrendering. But really lucky to find these um, hiding in my books from last year. So in this story, right, we have a very classic sort of underdog story, the character who should not succeed, um, but does anyway, through sheer determination and force of will, right? So um, surrendering, and um, just a note while I write, I use quotation marks. Um, when I'm writing about short stories. So I use quotation marks around the titles of short stories. Um, it's just something I've done um, for a while. So you can use um, quotation marks or underline, but just be consistent. Pick one and be consistent. Um, so I use these for short stories, I underline longer titles. Um, so surrendering variational Wong, I feel like is a really classic case of like, um, you know, so here we have Wong, at the beginning of the story and he can't read, right? Um, can't read. Or can't read well, let's say. Doesn't speak English, right? And then he learns, right? Even though there's no sort of support or help, right? He learns. He learns with no support. And then, you know, he, he gets, he learns English, right? And he gets to this point where he's sort of stuck and he's copying. So he's here now and he's copying, copies work. And he's sort of stuck there for a while. Then he gets this idea to be ambitious and write a poem, right? And so then he moves up and then he writes the poem. And then there's this sort of like downward crash as no one believes him. But then at the end, and I think that this is the really important part, and I don't even have space to put him all the way up here, but at the end he sort of gets to this message, right? Because the, the goal wasn't to write a poem. I mean, yes, that was the goal. But the most important thing is what he realizes at the end is that he is rich, right? He is rich in, in culture and language and story. So even though the dominant culture doesn't see his value, he recognizes it for himself, right? So that's sort of our, let me add my little light bulb for our end of the end of the idea right so he finds that he has wealth right even if it's not something that other people see he knows it for himself right so he finds value in himself so this is sort of the other kind of story that we have right so we have these two sort of structures um so what i would like you to do so we have um two other stories right um we have our story by um Malcolm X from the autobiography of Malcolm X, which is I think called Learning to Read. So I want you to think about, so this is gonna be your homework and I'll put this all on Schoology. I was about to write it, I don't need to. Um, I'll put it on Schoology. So I want you to think about what is the structure for that one? Is it like surrendering? Is it this like, um, is this like a hero's journey kind of story? Or, is it more like a montage kind of like Indian takeout was? And I'm gonna add one more story. It's a kooky story that I like. I think it's pretty funny. Um, and I want you to also think about that. So I'm gonna give you, so you're gonna think about the structure of the Malcolm X story. What is, what is the structure of that? And then you're gonna read this other story and you're gonna think about what is the structure of that? And you're going to take notes exactly like mine or similar to mine. This one you can absolutely do on um, some sort of um, Google Doc if you want to, if you can figure out how to just show all this by all means do it digitally. If you want, you can also do it in a notebook as always and send me a photo. Okay, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks, guys.